And well, as you can tell, it's still winter time as I'm doing these life videos. And uh, to be honest, it's, it's fun. I get to open up a little bit more and dive a little bit personal into my life. And we'll see how far we go in future videos. Probably not as far as you think I'll go. But at the same time, I figured today is a good day because it's kind of fresh on my mind. And I've been just very anxious, ticked off, and just kind of mad at the world. As some of you know, I'm part of trailtaker.com. Check out the website. We have free GPX files. So you can download all your trails. You can do a search by four-wheel drive hiking and uh, OHV use, whether it's a 50 inch or less, so single track or whatever. You, there's a search feature there, so you can look up trails based on that. You just drag the, once you enter your parameters on the side, you then whatever the view of the map is, I know it's kind of a weird shape window, we'll have to work on that, but you just move that around and it will populate a list of trails that fit, in, fit into your criteria. So, what about Trail Taker? First off, I want you to check out our events. I believe we're gonna put on an event in Moab, Utah. We have signups, I think we're up to like 38 people right now. Awesome. 50 bucks of the $150 registration is going right to Cliff at Ride With Respect. Now he fights for the trails to stay open. He does maintenance on trails, gets new trails put in. He's a great guy, a great advocate to the sport. Now this event is for our venture and dual sport bikes, plated bikes in general, but mainly a venture and dual sport. So your big GS 1200, your KTM, what are they up to, 1290s? Whatever has a plate. I mean, I guess you can bring out your dirt bike if it has a plate. The idea is you're probably going to want to connect trails and what have you. Well, out of the blue yesterday, the BLM, and not that BLM, the Bureau of Land Management contacted me. And they basically didn't like the fact that I had a schedule of ideas for rides. And then you could download those loops. They didn't like that I had a schedule. And every loop went from the campground back to the campground with one of the gas stations listed by the campground on every GPX file. Very user-friendly for those that wanted, hey, I want to go here and just go around. Now, they were just suggestions. Well, he didn't like I had it broken up to days. So, per his instructions, I went ahead and just blew away that list. So, if you're registered for the event and you're wondering, well, why is that list gone of ride suggestions I blew that away he said to stay in the gray area that if we pointed elsewhere so they're all under exploits so I went and put the exploits in because we're a GPS file sharing site these files are there no matter if we have the event or not these are files you can download for free and so under the description, so it's not right in your face and it's not listed per day. Here's the files. Per what the guy at the BLM, Bureau of Land Management, told me to do. So I did that. I thought we were fine. Our conversation on the phone was a little heated. He was asking, he kind of gave bizarre examples. I was kind of explaining how at previous events, you know, in the past before we had kind of like... A, but the page and stuff, people would raise their hand and say, hey, I'll volunteer. I'm going to go over to Top of the World. Anyone want to come with me? And people just kind of organically make groups and they go out, right? Well, it's a modern era. So the idea, I kind of keep track of people for safety reasons, is they could sign up for rides. Well, we knew Moab is sensitive, so we didn't have the sign-up feature or ride leader feature activated because well we know they're sensitive to that so we were taking that into account already but the idea initially is a for safety if i know bob is going to top of the world he doesn't come back and he was supposed to be with two other guys and they come back and we say well what happened to bob we know you did he go top of the world with you as it shows oh yeah he went but then he split after 
we have an idea of who was with who. Now, granted, even with a system like that, a lot of people will just go out and do whatever. They won't sign up. They won't tell you. They're there to do what the, they'll do. Some people will, believe it or not, stay at camp. You'll be like, do they ride? Because they're just at camp. They're at a campfire all day. Now, we can't have a campfire at the campground. We're in, in Moab. We're at the Moab RV campground, north side of town. They're just over the bridge. Really nice place. They have a pool, but because they're by the wetlands, they can't have campfire. So we're probably going to buy a, a propane table campfire so we can have a, a campfire. That is allowed. So that's an expense we're, we're going to do. So people probably have a, a campfire. Most likely, we're going to do that. That's We've talked about it. I think we're going to do that. This BLM guy, when I say, well, people raise their hand, he goes, well, what if everyone raises their hand mark and says, we're going to go ride Pritchett? And silly me, I had Pritchett on the list. That was mainly for me. Not for dual sport and adventure guys aren't going to go ride Pritchett. That's for me, because I'm on a light bike. Fair, I'll go ride Pritchett. There would be a few other guys that bring a second, third bike. They might go on a ride Pritchett at some point or think that loop's cool. And I share loops. I share loops whether I'm on Facebook, whether I'm on ADV Rider, whether I'm on whatever website or Facebook uh, group page. I've shared loops, ideas that I've had. So I don't know why sharing in the format through our website is any different but somehow that is different but his bizarre example is what if 50 people raise their hand and say they want to ride Pritch? i said well first off we i have never seen that in my life where you, we get a group of 50 people ride on one trail the most i have ever seen was way back one, our very first year in Silverton, I was like, I'm going over to Hermosa Creek. And I, the next thing I knew, there's 15 people. We went and did it. I got them all through it. That's just where I was riding for the day. Usually, you just have a few people jump in. Ever since then, we've broken the groups apart. We that, It's not fun for anyone. It's not fun for the person that stepped up. It's not fun for the now. You definitely have to have a sweep. It's not fun for any single person. It takes you longer. If that made people want to go ride one area, it's like, hey, Pritchett, I would recommend four, six if you're really skilled and can get through obstacles. But you shouldn't go more than six on a technical uh, a trail. You don't want to slow down Jeepers. They don't mind letting you around, but you just don't want to slow other trail users down. And if you have a group of 15 people and there happens to be others out there, you're slowing them down. I mean, look at Easter Jeep Safari. The Jeeps don't mind slowing you down. They don't mind blocking your path. But, hey, they're allowed to do that because they're a Jeep. However, motorcyclists were looked at as, Oh, you're gonna! Oh, you're gonna tear up the trail. You're gonna slow everyone down. You you give a negative viewpoint. It's like no, no, we don't. We're actually more pro trail than any other group. I don't know how many people I've been with where we actually stop and ask a mountain biker, "Hey, you need help?" Oh yeah, we're good. Hey, thanks for asking. Because most people will blow by them, and I'm not talking about riders. I'm talking about the, their own mountain bikers. I've watched it happen once out in Moab. We actually stopped to say, hey, you need help with that flat? And she's like, yeah, I can't find this tool. And all her riding group is just blowing by. They're looking over and they're blowing by. They weren't even willing to help their own. And here we are as riders stopping to help one of them. That's what we do as riders. We help people. We see a hiker out there, they look like maybe they shouldn't be out there. Hey, do you need some water? That's what we do. We see a Jeep broken down. Been there, done that. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, yeah, I'm with my kid and yeah, the shock bolt fell out and blah, 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 or whatever. I, I forget exactly. And when we actually got out of well, made it somewhat work. He's like, hey, probably could get out of here. But she's like, oh, I got somebody coming though. And it's like, okay. And she was like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what we do as riders. That's what we do with the groups I've ridden in. Now, are there groups out there that are don't care? Sure, that's hu that's humans. That's the type of people in this world today. And it's not just today; it's all time. But big population, it feels like happens all the time. It's always happened. 
but back to Raisin for 50 people and him saying, hey, you know, what What if they tell you to get lost after you tell them to break down into smaller groups? I said, well, they could do that if I have a permit. You know what the ranger actually had the balls to say? Well, you know, if you had a permit, though, you could quote section two, blah, 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 that you have to have no more than six people or whatever he exactly said. I'm paraphrasing here. But I'm thinking to myself, no, if they already told me to go pound sand, they're going to tell me to go pound sand again, aren't they? They're not going to like all suddenly agree with me because I cite some code. In fact, they're going to be mad. Probably make them even more mad. If that's the type of people they are. So when people pull out, I don't know how many times I've done this too. I've pulled out of campgrounds and I've told, I've told people, actually this happened in Meeker to me. I know the hotel owner, the inn owner at the Elk Mountain Inn. Check them out. Great place to stay. Friendly. They know all, you know, all about the area. Definitely check them out in Meeker, Colorado. But I'm talking to the uh, inn owner. And I'm like, hey, you know, because I was there early. Hey, I'm going to go ride to the east. Or no, west. I was going to go ride to the west in the more desert area. If you know Meeker, it's desert to the west, forest service to the east, you know, mountains and forest. Well, as soon as I pulled out, I said, eh, let's go east. And then I ended up on single track and almost off off a ledge. I had to get the bike back on by myself. It was It was crazy. And it was a big loop I did. I came back in. I said, you know what, Michelle? You know I did the stupidest thing. After I told you I was going west, I went east. She goes, that is stupid. Because if I didn't show back up, she would have been like, this guy went west. They would have been looking for me. Totally wrong area. And how much land out there? They would have never known until somebody stumbles across me east. (laughs) <laughs> you know people do that type of stuff people pull out of parking lots all the time and after saying they're going to go do I'm going to go ride Slick Rock and then they're like maybe they're filling up at the gas station they're going <laughs> to look at their bike and be like you know what let's go check, check out Sovereign Trail or let's go to Top of the World people do that stuff all the time so I don't know how the BLM thinks we as an organization or me as a person can keep track of people. They want 110 bucks and six bucks a head per day. And you can minus the six dollars out of the 110 until you I guess you use it up. But you have to pay 110 to get the permit. So I guess that's if you abandon it, you paid 110 dollars no matter what. If we get the BLM permit, some will say, why don't you just get the BLM permit? Because it's a lot of money, it's not factored into the cost. We're giving right off the bat $50 to Cliff. So it probably leaves $10. That sounds about right. That sounds about the past events. We might make $10 per person. Now, if we're lucky and work things out and have some plates left over from last year and don't have to buy as many, blah, 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 we might make 15, 20 bucks off a person. Now, we got to pay for our lodging. There's no money being made. There is no money being made. BLM thinks, wow, these people, Trail Taker, LLC. I'm in my house. I'm answering my own personal phone. We're a startup at best. We're a hobby, probably even better yet, (laughs) if you want to look at it that way. We picked Moab to help Cliff. Only reason why we picked Moab. So the BLM guy is watching this because he's already probably ticked off at me because he made the threat and he followed through with that threat. County and city are going to contact you. Why did he bring that up? Why is that even, that's not even part of his position? But he made sure to tell me they were for sure contacting me. Guess who contacted me right back when I got to him? He sent me an email saying, I forgot to tell you, it's 110 bucks. Six bucks a head. Think about it. I strongly suggest you do you get a permit. But we already talked about it on the phone. If I delete the list, 
because I had things in the schedule. If I delete that schedule and make it so we're more in the gray area, he was okay with that. That is fine. We wouldn't need a permit. One thing he doesn't know is I actually record my phone calls. And at right now, I'm not going to put that out there. But if he happens to see this video, Utah is a one-party state. Colorado is a one-party state. I record my phone calls. And yes, I got you saying, you know, even though it's a heat, it's a, it's a hard conversation to listen to because we both kind of went around. I wasn't really 100% in the mood to be talking on the phone. It was, you know, I had a lot going on with daughter at school, school delays, this and that. It was just not... A good time for me to be talking but I talked to him and I'm not a public speaker you know probably seems like it because I'm on camera I was hyperventilating I get like that sometimes if I'm talking on the phone I'm not I'm not breathing I start <laughs> I in fact in the, in the call I had to say hold on you know I need breath I'm I think I mentioned something to that effect I don't know what they want us to do now that's kind of weird telling you hey sign up for our event come out to Moab, but the whole BLM thing. I think we'll work it out, honestly. I think we're okay with where we stand. I think he just didn't understand how the event is put on. I mean, we're going to help you form groups. That's human nature. To tell me to go against human nature and say, hey, 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 I know... I know, Fred, you're going to go over top of the world. There's Scott and Adam and Bob over here. They want to go with you. You want? Can you all go together? So it's safer? Safety. I guess they don't care about safety at the Bureau of Land Management. Maybe they just want everyone to pull out of that lot at random times and go do whatever. But as I said, the county contacted me. I haven't heard back. But that sounded like we don't need a county permit. Everything on, which is funny, because everything on their permit was, are you having a parade? Are you having a bicycle race? Yes or no? These are a yes or no. No, no. Do you need medical services? No. Police blocking intersections type service? No. Do you need portal potties? No. Everything was no. So what do you want us to do? County says we don't, but I'm told... If we get a BLM permit, let's say we get a BLM permit because you say, well, Mark, just get a BLM permit. I'll pay it for you. Somebody's nice out there. They're like, hey, I'll cover that. Just get the BLM permit. I was told that automatically triggers the county. Then we need the county permit. Now, the county permit's not that expensive. It's like 100 bucks. But I'm guaranteeing you that triggers the city. And I haven't talked to the city yet. They haven't called me. We're hoping that is okay too because we've looked at the city. We did our due diligence before doing this event. We looked at the county. I'll put the link in the description so you can all look at it. We don't fall under any of that. We're not putting on a parade. We're not doing a motorcycle Harley thing through town. Same for the city. We don't fall under any of the city stuff was the same stuff. What, what do we need a permit for for the city? What is the city providing us? What is the county providing us? But they already said it's hinted at that they the, they're going to be okay. We'll see. It's the BLM has come back. What has triggered me to do this video is I've heard that there's going to be this gal that, from the BLM that thinks we we need a permit, even though we're not doing anything on BLM lands. A percentage of our riders are probably going to be on BLM lands. Mm, yeah, I mean you can surmise that because I mean you pretty much can guess that because where Moab is situated. BLM's all around. You got a little bit of Forest Service and for the LaSalle's. And then you got intermingled to state land. But state tends to go with whatever BLM and those decide if you're going to go through state land, which we're not going over to LaSalle, so we should be good. And then the school trust actually has a bunch of land. It's surprising. See, I've dealt with Moab before. I don't think he understood that. We've I've done Moab a few a bunch of times. Done Moab actually a bunch of times, just not with Trail Taker, as Trail Taker. But a lot of these riders are, are going to go do White Rim Trail. Well, that's a national park. They're going to have to get the permit ahead of time, and they're going to have to pay that fee. Some riders are going to go check out Arches. They're going to have to pay a fee, national park. Some people are going to go over to Sand Flats. I would say a large percentage of people 
probably are going to go to Sam Flats. Everyone seems to go there at least once. They're going to have to pay to get into Sam Flats. Now, if you're riding through Sam Flats and going to Onion Creek, because I believe that's all county road, you don't need a permit. You don't have to pay to go to Sam Flats. You just say, I'm going out to Dewey Bridge. Oh, okay. And there's going to be a lot of people doing that, probably. I'm guessing. There's going to be a lot of people on county roads. So what's going to, how are we going to know where people are riding? That's what it comes down to. I don't know. I have no way of keeping track with good enough records that's going to mean anything to anyone. Now, we try to do the keeping track thing with Rocky Mountain Adventure Riders. RMAR. I was on the board of directors. We tried to do that for Moab. We, at the end of the day, just guessed on a number. See, the BLM probably doesn't know that. We just took an educated guess. Because we people wouldn't use the sign-up sheets. People wouldn't use Trail Taker with it activated for sign-ups for a ride. They wouldn't do that. It just people are weird. They they'll basically walk around and they'll say, "Hey, hey, I heard you're going over." I'm like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm going over to Sand Flats." Oh, can I join? Yeah, sure. You know, I can't stop you from joining me, right? In those events, we were paying for the BLM permits and that Sand Flats though, so technically it wouldn't even be BLM. But the point being is. We had no idea, so we just had to guess. Like, okay, we think this many people went on this day, and we'll say this many went on this day. That should make the BLM happy. We're happy. Everyone's happy. So you say, well, why don't you do that again? Because it seems pointless. Why? So we're going to make up figures to tell the BLM because we're going to have no idea what people are doing. Now, I agree. You need a permit. If you're going to say, I'm coming to Moab and we're going to do this event on Pritchett. Yeah, you should have a permit because you're designating that trail as the place you're leading people, you're doing, you're, you're riding. We're not doing that. We gave some suggested loops. There's nothing binding you to those loops. I don't know if people will even see those loops, use those loops do anything with those loops. They might use those for later. They might use those before. I don't know. I gave suggestions because I'm a human being and I give suggestions to people so we're somewhat safe. I don't know what the BLM wants. I think we'll be okay. So registering should be okay. Let's say something does happen. Let's say we have the worst case scenario. We have to cancel everything you know they're going to nickel and dime us from blm to county to city you know what's the worst that happens we end up refunding you guys and you end up probably going out there anyways right you're probably going to go out there anyways you already have your reservation for the campground so even if we cancel the event that campground wants the business you you already have the spot I honestly don't, I don't know what it would accomplish necessarily canceling it because I think everyone's dedicated to going out there is going to go out there. I, you know, so the BLM, I don't think has a leg to stand on, but they think somehow maybe I'll bend. And that's the thing. I don't want to set a precedence either that for other groups that they're going to hound them for these permits that they don't need. So it's okay if I'm doing something for veterans with PTSD and I get 50 people out and we all stay at whatever the nicest hotel is with the pool and the bar, swim up bar, whatever the, there's some nice hotels now. And, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about our PTSD, maybe using the conference room or whatever. And then obviously we're going to go out and hike and maybe rent side by sides, do this or that. But now you're, you're, you're like, oh, well, you know, technically you, you need a BLM permit. But you're not doing anything on BLM land. You're not hosting anything. It's always been told to me as part of RMAR and knowing various trail organizations, you do not need a permit if you're not on public lands. We're not staying on public lands. 
And what our people use is up to them. It's not up to us. Maybe everyone's going to go ride up to Dewey Bridge on the highway and come back. I don't know. I really don't know. And that's not for me to figure out. So I don't know what to tell you, BLM. I don't know what to tell you. I think you have a misconception of what this event is. Plated adventure bikes, plated dual sport bikes, riders that tend to stay on county roads, might touch a Jeep road. But I'll tell you what, do you see too many BMW GS 1200s out there on Pritchett? No. Do you see them out on Cliffhanger? No. Will a few go out to Chicken Corners? Eh, good possibility. Will some get the permit to go White Rim Trail? That's highly probable. Every event I've ever seen, you'll get a lot of people signing up and getting those uh, permits or before the permits going to ride it. That, that's just what happens. They go and they pay the money and go ride that. There's always those people also that will go see arches. There's always those people that want to try the Slick Rock stuff, whether it's a GS1200, whether it's more of a dirt bike that's plated, will ride over to, to Sand Flats and try Slick Rock. There's a group of people that would probably go whitewash. There's a group of people that probably go up to uh, Black Canyon, Black uh, or is it Black Dragon Canyon? Up there west of uh, Green River. There's people that are, you know, they're on the bigger bikes. They're going to make these huge loops. There's people that are just going to go do a road loop. There's people that their whole venture is coming to the event. I've seen that happen nonstop. Their venture was coming from Tennessee to the event. Now they're pretty wore out because they've been on their bike and they rest for a day. Maybe they go out a little bit, but they're more or less they're in the campground. That was their adventure. I've seen street bike riders show up to RMAR events. Obviously, they weren't going on for service land for that event, but they showed up on a, a sport bike because they just wanted to be part of the group. They just wanted to talk to people. Maybe they knew people too, but they just wanted to be there, so they paid the money and came. <laughs> That is how it works. Maybe it's different with other groups. Maybe it's different with the Jeep groups. Maybe the Jeep groups, they're going out there and they're like, we're going to hit Poison Spider. Maybe they're very dedicated and that's what they do. We, as riders, will go, you know, I think I'll hit Poison Spider tomorrow. Morning rolls around. You look at a group of six people and you're like, I don't know. I, really, I don't want to do this poison spider. Hey, how about we go over here and go up to Metal Masher? Or how about we go Chicken Corners? Or how about we go Sand Flats? That happens all the time, as I said. And it will always happen like that. That's just, as riders, we're kind of indecisive. Because the thing is, we tend to be lone wolf riders that are coming together. And we don't plan things. We wake up and we decide, and that decision might change five times before we leave that gas station. It happens every single time. It doesn't just happen for events. It happens when I go out to Penrose. I might be like, hey, I'm not going to you know, ride blah, blah, blah trail. And the next thing I know, I'm riding blah, blah, blah trail. You know, I just told myself I'm not going to do that trail. It's an easy day. It, it happens. It happens all the time. So I just don't know what to tell the BLM. I don't know how to put it. They seem to be a little outdated in how they're handling things. And not thinking through that, hey, these guys are on private property. Maybe it's a scare tactic just to make the money. But the guy obviously made threats. Came through with those threats with the county contacting me. County seems like we're okay. And obviously the city still... It, but now if I go back and do the BLM and say, get those permits, then the county kicks in. They already said that. The county would kick in. They go with the BLM. I'm sure the city probably goes with what the county says. So then I'm setting a bad, bad precedent for every other group that wants to come out there. And that's not right. That's not right. I'm a believer of solutions. 
the solution here, if the BLM really wanted to get have a solution, instead of me ranting about the issue, what's the solution? The solution would be, well, if you sold a sticker to be on BLM land in that county or whatever area, Ranger District, then I would have no problem. We would tell every single rider, hey, buy a BLM sticker. Because you're part of this event, you have to buy a BLM sticker. Maybe it's good for 30 days or something. 10 days. Slap it on your whatever you're using, and there you go. You have a sticker, you're good. Ranger sees a sticker, you're good. That's the only solution I can think of. I know a lot of people will be like, oh, that's horrible. They'll do that for everybody. Well, you know, I do believe we, we should help with our public lands and, yes, tax money. But that doesn't go to cover everything. And I realize that. And I realize that those field offices, to make their money, that's why they're pushing for the permit. So they make a little extra money. But on the flip side, they're not seeing that here's Cliff with Ride With Respect who's going to do a lot for you, get the money. I really don't know, but that's just one solution that, you know, a sticker. I, I for, for events, not for individuals going out there to ride public lands, but for events. So then people, as the event organizer, I can say, by this day, we're, we're, we're holding the event in town. But if you're going to be on lands, you should have this sticker. And if you go out there, it's your own risk. Technically, then you're not part of the event because we're not sanctioning that you go out there without the sticker if you're riding BLM lands. That would probably be the only way to work for our events. And I think most people would be like, hey, yeah, okay, what, what's a $10 sticker? And they would pay the $10 and get a sticker. And so six bucks a head, they get 10. But you say six bucks per day, two days, that's 12 bucks. So two bucks less than they normally get. But it's kind of like in between. When it would be, okay, call $15. There you go. It's more. And everyone would be happy. That And it falls onto the rider where it should fall on, not the event organizer, because I have no way of keeping track of who goes where. You're going to penalize me, but how am I going to penalize the rider? I, there's no way. There's nothing I can do. It's out of my hands when they leave that campground. If they go jump off a cliff, that is on them. I'm not condoning that. I don't want anyone to commit suicide. But if they do that, I have no way of stopping that. I have no way of stopping them to go on BLM land. And I know this video has gone long, but man, they really need to fix the system. And they need to stop thinking riders are these terrible people that are tearing up the land and going to cause issues. We're not. We're out there helping make the trails. We're helping to raise money to keep the trails open for all. Because these are multi-use trails. And we tend to be the ones that stop and ask other recreational users, do you need help? Can I help you? Do you need water? Hey, do you need to use my phone? Hey, sir, I, I don't know where I'm at. Hey, yeah, let's look at my GPS. Yeah, okay, you're you're here. Where are you trying to go? Okay, and give give directions so they get out. See a minivan. Hey, I don't think you should go that way. It gets really bad. All situations I've been part of. All situations I have seen other groups I've been a part of handle and, and help people. Anyways, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and check out my other videos. And maybe we can hope that the BLM chills out. No reason to be crazy on us trying to help out an organization. But it is what it is, I suppose. Have a good one. Bye.